right, thanks for watching. And today we'll see how to prove limits involving square roots. In particular, consider the following example. So show that if we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn goes to S, so suppose Sn is a non-negative sequence that converges to S, then square root of Sn goes to square root of S. You may not realize this, but implicitly we're proving that the function square root of x is continuous. And in particular, what do we have to show? We need to show right, that for all epsilon positive, there is a sum uh, capital M such that if n is bigger than capital N, then the difference between the square roots is less than epsilon. Okay. And now for next part, usually we want to find n, which we still need to do, but let's just do some scratch work and analyze this term, because this is slightly a different problem from what we've been doing before. So, step one, scratch work. Now notice, what we have to do, we have to analyze this difference of uh, square roots. Sn minus square root of s. And now, don't forget your calculus techniques. If you remember a while back, how would you deal with limits involving square roots? Well, one trick that's is very useful is just multiply by the conjugate form. So what you want to do, you want to take the square root of Sn minus square root of S and multiply it by square root of Sn plus square root of S divided by square root of Sn plus square root of S. Now, why is this useful? Because notice the numerator becomes something quite nice. The numerator is of the form a minus b times a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared. Which here, what does this become? Again, still absolute value of square root of Sn squared minus square root of S squared over square root of Sn plus square root of S, which just becomes Sn minus S in absolute value, divided by this positive number, square root of Sn plus square root of S. So really for the denominator, we can just remove the absolute values. And then, if you remember this complex fraction business, what we want to do, we want to analyze the numerator and the denominator separately. Now remember, there's one assumption we haven't used yet. We have not used the assumption that Sn converges to S. So actually what we know is that this number here is actually small if we pick N large enough. And that kind of takes care of the numerator. We can make it as small as we want. On the other hand, the denominator, what we want, we actually want this to be bigger than cer a certain number. So square root of Sn plus square root of S, what we want, we want this to be greater than or equal than some other number that does not depend on n. Because the problem is this number is kind of wiggly. 
but we really want this to be greater or equal to a, than a constant. But notice this is non-negative. So in particular, square root of Sn plus square root of S is actually greater or equal to the square root of S. In particular, this thing becomes less than or equal to Sn minus S over square root of S. And what we want, we want this to be less than epsilon. What does that mean? We want this small number to be less than epsilon times square root of s. That becomes Sn minus s. It's less than epsilon times square root of s which finally brings up to the, us to the actual proof because, again, since Sn converges to S, we can have this less than epsilon O times square root of S because this is just any arbitrary positive number. So, now let's do our actual proof. So, let epsilon be arbitrary. If you want to let epsilon be given, then since Sn converges to S, we know there is N such that if n is bigger than capital N, then Sn minus S is not less than epsilon, but less than epsilon times this quantity. Again, think less than 2 epsilon or uh, 3.5 epsilon. Doesn't matter. Epsilon times uh, this. And the point is, for that same threshold, For that same n, if you go above that threshold, then what do we have? Then the stuff that we want to be small, square root of Sn minus square root of S. By the same calculation as before, this becomes Sn minus S over square root of Sn plus square root of S. Now, because this is greater than or equal to zero, this becomes less than or equal to Sn minus S divided by that fixed number. But now, Sn minus S, that is less than epsilon times square root of S, and you're dividing this by square root of S, which magically cancels out, and this becomes epsilon. So in other words, there is some n such that if n is greater than n, then this quantity is less than epsilon. Therefore, we can conclude that square root of Sn goes to square root of S. And limit n goes to infinity of square root of Sn equals square root of S. Ta-da! And that's it.